Hello and welcome to Turin. I'm here for the KTM Duke 390 and 125 launch. Those automotive aficionados out there might realize that Turin is the home of the Fiat factory and I'm actually sat in the old Fiat factory. It's been converted into a hotel and this is where the launch has taken place. We were upstairs in the hamster ball for the presentation. That was awesome. And then we've also been test riding the bikes on the Fiat test track up on the roof. That was insane. Same. So not only is this place steeped in a rich history of Fiat and all things automotive, but it's also in the heart of Turin. And I think KTM did that on purpose. We headed out first thing in the morning, 9 a.m. on the 125, and we were straight into a rush hour traffic. And I don't think that was by accident. I think they planned to do that to really get the 125 in its natural habitat where they think it will excel. And to make it even more authentic for us Brits, guess what? It rained. And as a commuter bike, it was unbelievable. It was great, it was, it was nimble, it was easy to ride, it was fun to ride in the traffic. And if I was commuting day in, day out through the city streets and there wasn't too much open road riding, this bike would certainly be on my radar. Like I said before, it's nimble, it's easy to ride and you can get in and out of traffic so easy on this thing. But where the KTM kind of excels above the rest of the 125s is the engine and in particular the gearbox. Now I've ridden plenty of 125s that have had slack gearboxes, false neutrals, invisible neutrals, and just gearboxes that don't really inspire confidence. Whereas this one, this, this felt like it was, it was out of a bigger bike. It was always a nice solid gear change and finding neutral was a breeze every single time. And I don't actually think I hit a false neutral all day. So that's really good. Another area this 125 takes a step above the rest of the crowd is the styling. It looks awesome, it's aggressive, it looks powerful, and to the untrained eye, the 125 could easily be a Super Duke 1290. There isn't a great deal of difference in it. Now obviously to you and me, we'd know the difference, but anybody else, I don't think they'd notice. For a commuter, looks aren't really on the top of the priority list. But for a 17 year old on an A1 license, you've got to have a bike that looks good. And this is one of the bestest looking 125s you will get. It handles great. The 15 brake horsepower engine has plenty enough poke. I really enjoyed blasting around the city streets on this 125. It was a whole lot of fun, even though it rained. LED lights all round, a TFT screen and WP suspension. A single 300 mil front disc with radial mounted Bybury caliper. Tires are 110 front and 150 rear section Metzler M5. Seat height is 830 mil. Tank capacity is 13.4 litre. And the 125 also comes with a Bosch ABS system, which can be deactivated if you want to do some stunts on private property. Right then, let's talk about this 390. Compared to the 125, there's not a great deal of difference in size or in looks, but the fun factor between them is huge. Let me hit you with some of the facts. 370cc, 44 brake horsepower. It's the same four pot caliper as the 125 with an upgraded disc up to a 320 mil and upgraded pads, which make those brakes much stronger. The Bosch ABS system on the 390 does have two settings. It has full ABS system as well as a Supermoto setting. The Supermoto setting allows that rear brake to be locked up so you can get that back end sliding and spinning without compromising the front brake's ABS ability. If I had to describe the 390 in one word, it would be fun. It's, in fact, it's probably the most fun bike I've ridden since my Supermoto racing days. It just, it was an absolute who. It was unbelievable. Once we'd done all the city riding, we're headed up into these lower mountain passes, some really tight twisty roads. Now, obviously, you're not always going to be riding one of these 390 Dukes on the tight and twisty roads. They're going to be more city-based bikes, I reckon. But out on the open road, it just excelled. It handled amazingly. The brakes were great. The suspension was awesome. It was like riding a really, really big, really fast bike. The ergonomics on the 390 are a little more aggressive than the 125. 
125, the 125 suspension is a little bit softer and a little less aggressive riding position. And you only notice that difference when you sit from one to the other. However, if you jump straight onto the 390, you won't necessarily feel that it is a really aggressive position. Only because we rode the 125 first did I notice that. So I asked Luke, the PR guy at KTM, who this bike is specifically designed for. Have they got a target market that they're trying to hit with this bike? Is it commuters? Is it young riders on an A2 license? Is it super bike riders who want a second bike just to get around town on? Uh, who was it for? And is that, he answered everyone. And I was like, yeah, I know. I know you say everyone. And you know, I know he's, you know, you've got to say kind of everybody. It's for everybody. But this bike truly is for everybody. This is one of the few KTM's that is sold globally. Now for people in Europe, it's going to be seen as an amazing commuting bike. It's going to be seen as an amazing A2 licensed bike. But for people in South America and, and in particular Brazil, Luke was saying, this bike is seen as a super bike. How Europe see a R1 or a, an S1000. So it truly is a bike for everyone for any occasion. As with all KTMs, there's a huge range of power parts available for it. R390s came with an Acropovic N can. It came with lever protectors, master cylinder and rear reservoir caps. Also available are crash bars. But if you go to KTM's website, you'll be able to check out all the prices and availability on all their power part accessories. Both the 125 and 390 come in KTM orange and also white. It's such a shame the first half of this launch was a complete washout. But then again, you can't really push a bike to its limits in rush our traffic through the city streets. The only real difference it made was to my crotch. If you're a commuter or on a restricted license, both the 125 and the 390 deserve a test ride. KTM are stepping it up and taking it to the big boys.